Hello everybody, my name is Hardcore Ninja and this is my very first ever YouTube tutorial series. And in this tutorial series, I hope to teach you the fundamentals of building an SFML side-scroller game engine. Now I'm going to be fully transparent, I am no C++ expert. I'm actually very new to C++. I started learning C++ in December of 2020 and I started off with LearnCPP.com. In my opinion, if you're brand new to C++, I highly recommend reading the first 12 chapters at learncpp.com. Um, it's probably the best online resource for learning C++. Uh, they start extremely fundamental and bring you all the way up uh, to the basics of object-oriented programming. And by the end of uh, chapter 12, you should be in a good spot to understand enough of the C++ syntax and enough about object-oriented programming to have a good time with this tutorial series. Um, I literally read every single page of every single chapter and did all the tests and the people that run that website are actually very active uh, in the comments and will provide you feedback on your code and I, I just can't recommend it enough. It's uh, learncpp.com. After I got through chapter 12 of learncpp.com, I jumped into SFML and I uh, used a lot of YouTube resources. Uh, one of the resources um, uh, that really helped me out a lot was this guy, uh, Suraj uh, Sharma. And um, I watched his entire C++ FM, SFML RPG tutorial series. Um, and I've created my own uh, SFML RPG uh, series. And that coupled with uh, Learn CPP, I didn't have to necessarily follow him to a T. Um, I made my engine uh, a little bit uh, I think simpler for my needs and the assets that I had and I was able to customize mine uh, a little bit more but I did learn a lot uh, from him as far as the overall uh, design and architecture of building a game engine with SFML and how to build different states and especially the editor. My editor is pretty much a complete clone of his. Uh, so he's a really good resource. I also did his OpenGL series as well. Um, very good guy. And he also has a Discord um, uh, chat as well. Also, uh, SFML has their own Discord as well. If you go to sfmldev.org uh, and go to uh, community, go down here, they have a very active uh, Discord page um, as well as their, uh, just their, their, their online forum as well. So I would totally recommend uh, joining their Discord and their forum. Uh, as well. So just to show you uh, the last project I did, so you have some confidence that I know what I'm talking about, this is that RPG uh, game engine. Uh, I forgot what buttons I did for that. Ah, uh, anyway. I forgot what buttons I did for that, but anyway. I had a button for uh, expanding this. Uh, I forgot which ones I used, though. Uh, I have to click some buttons just to see. Anyway, I can't figure it out. But anyway, this is the level editor. Uh, 
I can't remember the buttons I picked for this, but essentially I could make a tile as big as this. Pick it up. Nah, that's not it. Alright. So anyway. Alright, so hopefully you see from that, um, we'll be building a level editor uh, quite similar to that uh, for building our side scroll uh, levels. Um, so we can make intricate levels that are well designed and look pretty. Uh, as you saw, I was able to enter uh, that building and leave it. Uh, that's like switching the tile maps um, so that you're able to go between different levels. We'll do that. And yeah, it's, you know, we will definitely be using uh, the editor aspect of this program for the side scroller as well to help develop the level. All right, so hopefully that'll give you some confidence that I know a little bit of what I'm talking about. All right, so today we're going to get the SFML uh, libraries loaded, and um, we're also going to get the Visual Studio project going. Um, we're going to make the directories of the libraries dynamic, so uh, when we upload stuff to GitHub, it will do it according to the solution directory, because otherwise, if you don't do that, uh, every time you download your repository to another computer, you'll have to change the directories for all the libraries. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to download uh, SFML 251 and you want to download this right here. Okay. So I already have it downloaded, but you just download it like that. Okay. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to open up Visual Studio here and you're going to go to create new project, empty project, all right I would leave that unchecked. Um, so yeah we'll call this uh, side scroller game engine. Okay. And we want to choose, I'll choose the desktop for this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Looks good to me. So we'll create that. Okay, cool. So we've got our side scroller game engine. All right. So I'm using the 64 bit version um, of SFML. Uh, it's 2021. Most people should have a 64 bit computer. Um, you get, you're free to use the 32 bit if you want. It's going to be the exact same process. Um, and maybe at a later stage, I will add the 32-bit um, libraries as well so that, uh, you know, your application is both available for 32-bit and 64-bit. But for right now, we'll just be using the 64-bit, all right? So just hit download here, okay? Um, and by the way, these videos are going to be completely improvised, so I'm bound to make mistakes. Um, I'm just kind of doing this for fun, so I don't really have any uh, high... Uh, ambitions for being a YouTuber or anything, but uh, I'm just doing this just to kind of test myself and make sure that I fully understand these concepts. Uh, and hopefully if I can teach it to you, that kind of proves that I know this stuff pretty well as well. Okay, so I'm using the 64-bit version. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to change this to 64-bit. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a pre-compiled header. So what a pre-compiled header uh, does is it's one header that will be your entire header for all your classes and it will keep every library of the C++ standard library in there as well as all the uh, SFML specific libraries. Um, it also speeds up compilation time quite a bit and it ensures you don't have duplicate headers uh, for any of the standard library stuff. We will still be including uh, library or uh, headers to um, other classes that we create, but this will take care of the majority of our third party lips, okay? So what we want to do is we're going to go to project and you're going to go to add class and we will call this header just like that header. okay you need uh the header and the cpp the cpp kind of creates a object file that uh is necessary for the pre-compiled headers okay so bam okay so this is a window specific uh header guard um i don't like using this because um if you were to ever want to make your program available for Linux or uh, Apple, then you would have to switch it to what I'm about to do anyway. So I think it's a little bit more cross-platform to do header guards this way. So I'm doing the old school F in def 
header fat by header h and then at the bottom here end f okay oops end f okay great and now you can go ahead and just delete this class thing we're not going to need it um all right so i can actually go back here and just copy this so i already have a uh I already have a pre-compiled header in here. Uh, and what this does is this is the entire C++ standard library, all right? And these are the uh, SFML specific lips, but I'm just gonna copy the standard library portion of this and uh, essentially go into here and just copy that right in there, all right? That's every single um, standard library uh, that currently exists, okay? Uh, awesome. So I guess if you're asking, well, where'd you get all these libraries? Well, you just go to Google and um, you go uh, uh, C++ standard library headers and uh, CPP preference will have this page here and this will have all of them. Now, uh, be warned that some of the uh, C compatible headers down here are depreciated. Uh, that's why I commented them out. So essentially you just do hashtag include and then these little um, kind of arm brackets and then you just add this stuff like this. All right, and I have, you know, little titles. Um, so for example, input output libraries, I got that um, from one of these. Essentially, uh, I don't remember how I actually labeled these, but uh, yeah, I kind of got these libraries. Oh, like so, for example, container libraries. Container library is one of these. Uh, huh, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. For example, container libraries. Okay, and that's how I kind of label these. Um, if you get any warning message in here, just pay attention. It will tell you what library uh, is not working, and then you just comment it out like this. Okay. So I have these specifically commented out because they don't work. But yeah, it was kind of a setup. I had to kind of copy and paste and do all this. But you just do it once, and then you're all set up for the rest of your life for pre-compiled headers. Okay. So I did that in the H, uh, uh, header.h, all right? Then save all, and you can just go ahead and close that tab. All right. And I like to keep the CPP file up here. All right. The next thing you're going to do after you created your little header file um, in the header CPP. There's not going to do, this CPP is uh, nothing, does nothing but just create the object of the pre-compiled header. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click on the header.cpp uh, file. You're going to go to properties. You're going to open up the C, C++ tab. You're going to go down to pre-compiled headers and this pre-compiled header here, you're going to switch this to create and you're going to change the name of this to header.h. Like that, bam. Okay. And make sure that this is on all configurations and make sure that this is on 64 bit. All right. If it's not, you'll get issues. All right. They're going to hit apply. And okay. Great. Now we've created the, the pre compile header. Now, what you do is you go to your uh, project uh, tab up here. You right click it. You go to properties. Then you go to CC. You go down to pre compile headers here. And what you're going to do is you're going to select use. All right. And then in here, you're going to type in again, header dot H. Uh, again, can't stress this enough. Make sure that this is on all configurations and make sure that this is uh, times 64. Okay. Cool. Then you're going to hit apply. Bam. Okay. That's it. Now you have pre-compiled headers. Okay. So now uh, we're going to go to project we're going to add new item and we're going to make our main file. So main.cpp. And I just like to filter everything very neatly here. So my main is going to go into there because that way I can easily collapse it and get it out of my site. And now we're going to do include header.h. All right. 
Now, if you go down here, you go int main, make a little main function, do your std c out, uh, hello world, hello world, that, turn zero. Uh, essentially, you should have no issues and this should compile. See, so the IO stream library is in that pre-compiled header. In blah, voila, voila, you have hello world. Okay, so that's compiled, right? Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, link the SFML libraries. Okay. So you should have went to download you should have downloaded the 64-bit version if you want to do the 32-bit bit version that's totally fine exact same thing just make sure that this is on times 86 here not 64 and make sure that uh when you're in here this is always set to 32 okay or uh not 32 but uh oh yeah windows 32 right like that okay cool excellent so the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, extract this thing, go into here, go into here, go into this bin folder and select everything and uh, cut it. And then you're gonna go into here, you're gonna go into here, and then you're gonna paste it right here. Excellent. And then you're gonna go back here you're going to uh, select the lib and the include fo folder. You're going to cut that. And you're going to paste both of those in here like this. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's really important that you take the contents of this bin folder out and put it in here. Uh, all that stuff should be in the same uh, folder as the main and the header CPP and the header.h. Okay. All right. And then you have the include, and then you have the lib. Okay. Excellent. All right. Close down all that. Okay. So now that you have all that, we're going to right click uh, the solutions. We're going to go to properties. Um, if this was up, you're going to go to C slash C plus plus. You're going to go to general. And you're going to go to additional include directories. Okay. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click this uh, folder icon, then you're gonna click these three dots, and you're going to select the include folder, okay? Now, uh, the way that this is written right now, it's not dynamic, all right? So if you were to upload this to GitHub and then download it at your friend's computer or have someone else download it, they would have to know to go into the preferences here and change the directories according to the computer. So this is specifically my C drive users, not this PC, which is the PC, the name of my PC, desktop, the side scroller game engine, etc. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take out all of this. Okay. Now our solution folder is outside of our project folder. All right, because we did not check that checkbox when we first made this project. Okay, so we have to go and all right, so this is the folder that our solution uh, application is in. So this is the dot uh, SLN. This is like the Visual Studio project uh, executable, essentially, um, or the equivalent to that. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to add this little here, I'll do this from scratch here. Ah, I'm going to keep all that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do another slash here like this. And we're going to do the money sign. We're going to make a little bracket like that. And we're going to write solution dir like that. All right, this is like a little Visual Studio specific code tag. That means, all right, we're going to start in the directory that the solution is in. All right. So in here, we're starting in this folder. That would be this folder right here on the desktop, okay? Then essentially we have to go into the project folder, which is this side scroller game engine. And then we have to go into the include, all right? 
and that's where all the include stuff is, all right? Make sure that this is on all configurations, make sure that this is 64-bit, okay? So again, this is like a little code that says, uh, go into whatever folder the solution's in, okay? And then go into the project folder and then go into the include, all right? That's kind of the, the flow of the directory. Okay, and then apply, right? Once you do that, close that, open the linker tab, go to general, go to additional library directories. Open here, click this, click that, select the lit, okay? Same exact thing here. So we're gonna take out all of this stuff that's very specific to my computer. And uh, we're gonna do solution, dirt, like that. Beautiful. Okay, so again, just so you really understand this, all right? We're starting in the solution directory, then we're entering the project folder, and then we're going into lit, okay? That's what that means, all right? So this means like essentially start in the solution uh, folder, okay? Cool. Great. And then you're going to hit apply. All right. Once you do that, we will go to input here. Okay. Now this is, um, if you go to the homepage, you go to learn, you go to tutorials, you go to SFML and Visual Studio, you will learn that there is going to be a difference between your release note, uh, your release build includes and your debug includes. So essentially, uh, SFML is made up of five different modules. You got the system module, you got the Windows module, you got the graphics module, the audio module, and the network module. And each one of these modules has their own uh, header uh, file. All right. So um, the debug mode of your IDE will require a different header file than the release mode. Okay. And um, essentially, uh, the, the debug mode requires the header file with this prefix uh, dash D at the end of it, okay? So if you were to go into here and go into uh, here and then go into lib, you will see uh, these, these libs here, okay? I, yeah, these uh, lib, uh, these library files here, okay? So this is F SFML-audio, and this is SFML-audio-d, all right? So the D is for the debug. This is for the release, okay? So you're going to go to input. You're going to go to additional dependencies. You're going to click this down. You're going to go to edit. And, uh, oops, sorry. You're going to, first of all, select debug, okay? Go here, and you're going to go SFML-audio-d.lib. Uh, you're going to go sfml-graphics.d.lib. You're going to go sfml-window-d.lib. You're going to go sfml-system-d.lib. Uh, that's one, two, three, four. Oh, and we got the network. Okay. SF ml dash network d dot lib. All right, so we got network, we got system, we got window graphics, audio. There's five. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Now I'm going to copy all that because we're going to need it. Click OK. Great. And apply that. All right. Now you're going to change this to release. And you're going to copy all this stuff, but we're just going to take away that dash d at the end of all these. OK. All right, so now we just got sfml-audio, sfml-graphics-window, system-network, okay? Okay, click apply, okay? Now what I would go ahead and do is put this back to all configurations because the majority of the time you're gonna be dealing with uh, all configurations. Okay, great. So now we got our libraries linked, they're dynamic. We're gonna go back into the header Dot H, and if you go down here, make an area S, SFML libs include and um, SFML audio essentially 
right graphics network window oops system one two three four five all right that's it all right so audio graphics network window system okay so those are all of our uh, SFML lives, all right? And they all live nice and cleanly in this one header. Save all. Okay, fantastic. Now, if you go to, if you go back to this page, um, again, go to homepage, learn, tutorials, uh, SFML Visual Studio, we essentially did everything that this page uh, talks about. And so if you were to take this main function, just copy it, put it here, uh, you should get no issues, and all this should run. And you see, now we got the uh, little green circle that says SFML works. Um, not sure why I'm getting this, but it works. <laughs> so there you go. SFML is working. Um, you see it's identifying the render function, uh, the, win uh, the render window class is identifying the circle shape class. So everything is good in the hood. All right. Um, at this point, I would pause the video and go Google search, how do you connect Visual Studio to GitHub? But essentially what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create a GitHub account like this and then connect Visual Studio to it. I believe you go to Git settings and just put your GitHub information in here. It's been a while since I've done this, I forgot how, but it's not that hard. You just Google search how to connect uh, GitHub to Visual Studio 2019 and you'll be good to go. All right, once you've connected it and you know it's connected, uh, again, pause the video right now, figure out how to do that. You're gonna wanna first create a GitHub account and then do that, all right? The next thing you're gonna wanna do after you connect to Visual Studio and created that account is go to Git, go to Create Git Repository, okay? Great, local paths, great. Make sure this is a, a private repository and just click create and push. All right, fantastic. All right, now that is essential. Now we have, um, if you go to view, get repository, we have pushed all of the project files up. We have created the project. If I go here and you see now my repository is here um, and I can go into here and I see the header file. Uh, I see this. Uh, this is the pre-compiled header. Um, I can go into the main. I see the main file here. What this allows us to do is this allows us to do right click on the project, get, and all right, if I were to change something about this, so let me go back here. So let's just say, all right, blah, 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 blah. All right, I screwed up the entire program. All right, oh man. And even, oh man, I saved all. Oh man, what am I gonna do? I just screwed up the entire program. I could go to the project here, go down to get, and click undo changes. And voila, I'm back to my last commit. This is critically important because this allows you to get creative, it allows you to make mistakes and never have the fear that you have screwed up all of your code that you've spent days, weeks, hours on, okay? So at this stage, you're gonna wanna make sure you have built a Git repository for this. And by the way, these icons here, so if it's blue like this, then that means the code is the same as the last commit, all right? And we'll go through the process of committing this, but essentially you go to project, right-click the project uh, after you make some changes. You have to make some changes like this. 
All right, you go to project and you go to commit and then you type in the notes and then you hit commit all. It will create the commit locally on your computer and then um, you have the option to push it to the cloud so that it's saved in the cloud, okay? But if you ever were to screw anything up, it allows you to undo. Like I could just write, you see how this has a red check mark now? That means that I've made changes uh, since the last commit. So I can right click this one project file, go to get and go to undo changes. And now I'm back to the original state, all right? So that's critically important um, at this stage. Again, this allows you to get extremely creative and uh, not fear that you're going to lose anything or you won't be able, it essentially allows you to undo all your mistakes. All right, so that's kind of the point of it. Alrighty, well, I hope you learned a lot from this video. Uh, just to recap what we did, uh, we created a pre-compiled header, so we don't have to worry about including standard library headers. Uh, we made all of our libraries dynamic. Uh, so essentially, if anyone were to go to GitHub here and download your repository, they wouldn't have to go in the preferences here and redo all those directories because we have it set up, you know, as pulling this stuff from the uh, from the solution directory. Okay. So, and then we created um, we we created a repository for it and we uploaded the stuff uh, to the repository. So in the next video, we'll be creating the game class and going from there. All right. Bye bye.